Hey TCS TV viewers, it's Dave and Evelyn from the Camera Store. Today we're coming to you from East Village here in Calgary. Today we're testing out Sony's 12 to 24 millimeter f2.8 G Master lens. This is the world's first 12 to 24 2.8 lens and it's a G Master lens from Sony meaning it's of the highest quality. Now you're asking yourself, why do I need such a wide field of view? Well, I actually love it. I love when I have it extremely wide. When you're doing uh, skyscapes, and big cloudscapes, that kind of stuff, it really, really shines. It's also a lot of fun to play with architecture. Down here in East Village, we have a lot of really cool sculptures as they're revitalizing this part of town. And it's been really a lot of fun to get some interesting perspectives on some of the architecture here. We are down at the Calgary Public Library and it's a fantastic building to shoot, especially with an ultra wide angle lens like this. Now we do have some other lenses on the market that can kind of compete. In fact, Sony makes a 12 to 24 f4, which is quite highly regarded. But the more direct competitor is Sigma's 14 to 24 2.8 art series lens. And it's a very good performer. Now, by far and away, the Sony G Master lens is the largest of the three. It's the heaviest and by far the most expensive. Now, I know that Sony is only two millimeters wider than the Sigma Art series, but in a tight and close space, every millimeter can make a big difference. This is an important lens for Sony, particularly because it's an f2.8 lens throughout the entire wide angle range. And we could get into all of the technical jargon about what makes this lens impressive in terms of the spherical elements, the coatings, and all of the research and development that went into making this lens very impressive. But what I think you probably want to know and what I want to talk about is whether or not this lens produces sharp results, beautiful images, if it's well corrected, and most importantly, is it worth it? If I am blown away by how well corrected this lens is, especially at 12 mil, it's such an extreme wide angle and it looks that good. Yeah, I agree with you. Sony is known for making these amazing G Master lenses and it's impressive to see that for such a wide angle perspective, there's very little curvature distortion. I mean, your lines are looking really nice and straight and so your pink house is <laughs> perfect. And again, like it's impressive because you sometimes think of 12 millimeter of almost giving this like fishbowl effect. The lines are so nice and straight and it really gives some extra flexibility. Oh, it's beautiful that way. Now I am taking full advantage of Sony's a7R IV with, that has a built-in level. So you're gonna maximize that effect if you can keep your camera nice and level. As soon as you tilt it up or down or side to side, you're gonna get some, some weird lineage. <laughs> I guess it's a good thing to mention right now that um, it's weather sealed. Um, baby is not weather sealed, which is why Dave is kindly pushing my baby far away under the arch, but uh, yeah, this lens is getting wet, so. This lens features four linear actuating motors, which promises to have very speedy autofocus and nice and accurate. So we're gonna put it to the tester and what better sport to play around with with an ultra wide angle than skateboarding. The guys here at the compound have let us in and we're gonna see what we can do. We just came from the compound. We had a great time shooting skateboarders. I might take up skateboarding. It looked like a blast. Yeah, you might want to take up a new insurance <laughs> policy for that one. Uh, but it was a very good test for us to see how well this lens kept up with Sony's amazing autofocus tracking system. Yeah, now I noticed that there was a difference between the Sigma Art Series, the 1424, and this G Master 20, uh, 12 to 24. Uh, there was a noticeable difference when it came to autofocus speed, when it's tracking action. When we were shooting the skateboarders, we got very close to the action at times, and this lens is capable of doing that because it has a minimum focusing distance of 28 centimeters or 11 inches. So that means, for instance, shooting a flower like this, I can get about this close to this flower and take a nice shot. Having that small of a minimal focusing distance really allows a lot of creativity. After spending the day walking around East Village, Dave and I decided to head out here to the Big Rock, which is literally a big rock in the middle of the prairies. It's about 20 minutes away from the city. And it's interesting. I thought it'd make a really good foreground subject. And it's actually a glacial erratic that was brought here during the Ice Age and just planted. And so it's not too far from the city, but it gives an interesting dynamic look to astrophotography. 
Astrophotography is where I think this lens really sings. The f2.8 is great for being able to get in as much light as possible for this wide angle field of view. And having a 12 millimeter field of view is excellent. You're able to see more than the eye can see for shooting night photography. And I think it did a phenomenal job. I also want to bring up a few things about this lens that I like physically. One of them is becoming a G Master signature thing, which is this little control button on the side. It can be set as your focus hold button or anything that you want, and it's just a nice feel to it. I also like the feel of the focus ring as well as the zoom ring. They're really smooth and they feel extremely high quality. And that brings me to the size and weight of this lens. It does feel substantial, but considering that it's a 12 to 24 millimeter lens, I actually don't mind the weight and feel of it. I don't think that it seems too big. Another thing that I should mention is if you're not familiar with super wide angle lenses like this, it is a convex style front element. And so there's no filter ring on it. There is of course a little filter slot at the back of the lens, which has some pros and cons. The pros are that it's very affordable to put in one of these filters. It comes with a little template so you can cut out your own filter. And so you can use ND filters on a lens like this. The downsides are that you have to do your own arts and crafts. Maybe that's a pro for some people, um, but you do have to cut out the filter yourself. And it's very easy to scratch or bend those filters. And so you have to watch your shots as soon as you insert it to make sure that it's not affecting your images. I also really appreciate that the lens hood is built onto it. And this is smart because it's the form of protection for the lens element on the front. It also comes with a really great cap that covers that whole element. Well, Dave, we shot everything that we could think of to shoot with this lens, from architecture, landscapes, astro, skateboarding. We even did some portrait work with this lens, and I don't necessarily <laughs> recommend an extreme wide angle lens for doing portraits no, with. No, I mean, it works okay for kids and youth, and it's definitely a character lens. Yeah. Now, what I did discover with this lens, it's incredibly sharp, incredibly well corrected, and it's the best 12 to 24 zoom lens that's 2.8 on the market. Yeah, it's the only one and it's amazing. <laughs> and there's really nothing that competes with it to this level. It is a step above the other lenses that we are comparing to. And I would call this definitely a professional lens that is worth that hefty price point. Yeah, if you are a working pro, you're gonna wanna buy this lens somehow. You're gonna find the way to make it work. Or if you're just an enthusiast, you're gonna love this lens. It's amazing. Yeah, and we want to know, what do you guys think? Do you think it's worthwhile for you? Is it something that you want to put in your camera bag? Let us know by commenting below. Make sure you follow us on Instagram. And if you're new to our channel, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so we can catch you again very soon. Hey, you're still here. If you want to check out our latest episode, click up here. If you want to check out the gear used in this episode, click down here.